Thank you very much, and I apologize that I've been upstairs doing an oversight investigations uh, hearing, but that has now concluded. Uh, and I know that you all have talked some about grid reliability, but I'm going to ask a couple questions in that direction. I don't think these have been asked. So, uh, Director Ortiz, according to the Energy Information Administration, more than 220 coal-powered plants have closed since 2014. While a good bit of this capacity was replaced with natural gas plants, some was replaced with non-dispatchable generation like wind and solar. Does FERC take the rate of retirement and wait for dispatchable generation into account when they promulgate new reliability standards? The reliability standards are developed through a, um, through a, a process that occurs primarily first at NERC and industry, um, and it, they're developed by industry and, um, and then submitted to the commission for approval. Uh, within the deliberations at NERC that our team monitors, they consider um, the, um, these are utility representatives that take into account the, a wide range of both technical as well as kind of environmental, environmental meaning the state of the um, utility industry when working through options for what those standards look like. So, um, you know, um, uh, not pointing to any specific um, standard, I, I, I can attest that the development of those standards is a very robust process that takes into account many, many factors. All right, I appreciate that. What can you tell us about the EPA's interaction with FERC when the EPA is, prom is promulgating regulations that could affect the bulk power system? Specifically, what happens if EPA tells you what they're doing and then you make a recommendation or a comment and then they reject that? Is there any recourse within the administration to resolve that difference of opinion? Um, that's a, a legal uh, question. I'm, I'm an electrical engineer, sir, um, so I would right. probably have to take that back and, and have ask our general counsel's office to provide a more fulsome response. Well, could, could you do that for me? Because uh, obviously, you know, we're concerned about grid reliability, and we want to make sure that as we move forward, if there's a conflict in the administration, there's some way to resolve it, particularly if uh, you all are saying that it may be affecting the reliability of our electrical system. Okay. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, so I'm a proud sponsor uh, or co-sponsor of Representative Hudson's uh, bill where we're talking, uh, uh, that we're talking about here today on banning the increase in transformer standards. Assistant Secretary Rodriguez, you talk in your testimony about how you all are administering a tax credit program for companies to replace their transformers. What's the uptake on that, Ben? I apologize for not knowing that information as I sit here today. I, I would have to go back and, and ask the MESC office who is administering that program, how's it? But I will absolutely yeah. do that for you, sir. Be good to know if, if, if the program's being taken up. Um, and as a part of that, and you may not have this information either, which is fine. I mean, folks back home may not understand. We ask all kinds of wild questions and you can't be prepared for everything. And I understand that and appreciate that. But are the companies who are looking for transformers able to find them that meet the current or the proposed standard, and uh, are those transformers made in the United States of America or elsewhere? The, the good news on distribution transformers is that the majority of the transformers manufactured in use for use here in the United States are produced by domestic manufacturers, and we're doing everything we can to assist them to increase their capacity because what we don't want to do is, uh, as the demand for transformers increases, uh, quite frankly, to have people look overseas for them. So the, the good news is that the MESC office is not just working on uh, getting those incentives out there, but we're providing concrete, you know, face-to-face -face support on everything from uh, labor, uh, getting, it's, it's hard, I don't know if you've been to a distribution transformer manufacturing facility. I have, I've got several of them in the district. Uh, excellent, uh, as have I. Uh, you know it's hard work being done by, by good American folks who are doing really good work out there. Yeah. But it is also work that takes training. It's about a six month uh, time frame before you get really good at it. And uh, retaining those folks is not easy. There are other jobs out there that quite frankly aren't as hard. Uh, so. Uh, what we're trying to do around that is to ensure that we help the distribution manufacturers, which are local in nature, to try to expand expand their uh, scope of thing. And may I say this last thing because it's important to me. As, All right, as, you uh, get it out, and I want to get something out quick okay, before my time's out. Uh, but also, also to find veterans. 
to, to work in these facilities. And, and so what I would say back is my companies tell me they're having a hard time finding the electric steel, the steel that's used in those transformers yes, from an American source. There's only one left. And if we keep raising the standards, we'll have none. I yield back. Chairman yields back. I know I'll go to the uh, acting ranking member, Ms. Fletcher.